So then gang, that is pretty much it for this series. There is just one more quick thing I do want to show you before I wrap it up completely. And that's how to make elements draggable on a page. So if I was to click and hold down, I could drag something around. And that is really, really easy to do with Framer Motion. So I'm going to try making this logo over here draggable around the page. So I'm inside the header component. And this is the div surrounding the logo. That's the thing I'm going to make draggable. Now, the first thing we need to do whenever we're using any kind of motion on an element is add the motion dot before it. And also, since this has a closing tag, we need to do that down here as well. Motion dot div. OK, so now we've done that to make this draggable. Dead simple. Add the drag prop. Ta da! That's it. So if I save it now, we can go over here and we can drag this around. How simple was that? Now, I can also shoot this off the page if I wanted to like that. Not quite, but I can do. OK, and now we can't get it back. If I refresh, it's going to be in its original position. But you get what I mean? I can just move it around like this. Now, what if I want to be able to move this around, but I want to basically not allow it to end up somewhere else. So I want it to spring back after I've moved it around. Well, for that, we can add drag constraints, meaning we can constrain the object to rest within a certain boundary. So let me show you how to do that. Come down here and add in this property, drag constraints. And we set that equal to an object right here. And we define a left, top, right and bottom property. Now, this is saying here, I want the drag constraints to be exactly where it starts. I don't want there to be any breathing room. It can't be out by any pixels in any direction. And that means it's going to spring right back to its original position. Let me save this and show you. So if I try to drag this now, notice a it's a bit harder to do. But as soon as I let go, it springs back to its original position because it can't be out by any pixels in either direction at the end. That's what these drag constraints do. Now, if, for example, I changed this to 50, it means that, OK, if you're dragging it around, we can move it by 50 pixels to the bottom and the ending position can be out by 50 pixels relative to the starting position. So if I save that and move it around, you'll see I can drag it over to the right like this, but it's going to go way over to the left, but it's not in the same position vertically. And that's because we have a 50 pixel constraint this way. So this is 50 pixels down from where it was. I can move it back up and it rests in its original position again, but I can bring it down as well. Now, if I did that in every direction, it would mean I can do the same thing in every direction. I can now drag it to the right by 50 pixels if I wanted to or down here. OK. Now, I'm going to set it to be zero in each direction. So it always ends up back where it started. Save that and preview. And now we can see it does this. All right. So we can also add on another property called drag elastic. And that basically controls the elasticity of the drag. And a higher number means it's more difficult to drag around. Right. So, for instance, if I come over here and say drag elastic is going to be equal to a number and I'm going to change it to 0 0.7 then this is going to be a bit easier to drag around okay because it's a slightly higher number so the lower the number the harder it is to drag around so let me just change this for example to 0 0.2 this will become harder to drag around so if I do this now it's very hard to move around if I change this to something like 2 and save it then you're going to notice it's very easy to drag around and it actually goes further than I drag it. OK, so there's a few different properties we can use to help with the drag of different objects. And with that, that is pretty much it. I really hope you've enjoyed this series. We've learned quite a lot about frame of motion and hopefully now you're in a position to go out and add it to your React apps. Now, there are other features which I've not fully covered in this series, so you can learn more by checking out the Frame Emotion docs right here. The link to this is going to be down below, and they also have a bunch of live examples and the source code for you to check out too. So again, definitely check this out and look at the different examples that they do. There is more to learn. So then, my friends, I really, really hope you've enjoyed this series, and if you have enjoyed it, please don't forget to share, subscribe and like. That really means a lot and it helps out an enormous amount. 
And if you do want to join the cause and support the channel, you can do by clicking the join button on the channel homepage or underneath the video right down below. You also get a little cool ninja badge next to your name in the comments for that. And it's 99 pence or cents per month. And I've also created several premium in-depth courses on Udemy. So the first one is Modern JavaScript. The second one is D3 and Firebase. And the third one is Vue.js and Firebase. So if you want to take one of those, all the links with the discounts automatically applied to them are going to be in the video description down below. So again, thanks so much for watching. And I'm going to see you in the very next course.